G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Bandage Cube Creations. Well, today's cube is a very interesting little specimen. I don't think it's a necessarily a super difficult one, and it does have some history. So this one is called the Edge Road. You may remember this from at least 10 years ago. This was presented by Calvin's Puzzles. It came out in a series of the Edge Road and the Belt Road, the Corner Road and the Cross Road. And the Edge, Belt and Corner Roads were fairly not too difficult. And I know that because I solved them at the time. I made videos on them. I have not looked at them since then. So this is going to be essentially a sight unseen video. Not that I'm bragging about that. I'm just saying that's what I plan to do. The crossroad was apparently crazy hard and very few people managed to get hold of that. But what I'm most interested in is the credit that is given to Evgeny Grigoriev for this cube. I'm not entirely sure why. Let's take you through it. This one, when it was released by Calvin's Puzzles, there was a video to a demo and the video was put out by Evgeny. And on that video, he actually said, this was not my original idea. It belonged to someone called Javier somebody or other. And it's interesting you go and look at the video that Evgeny has linked to, and that links to a cube called the Cabe Cube. And when you go and research the Cabe Cube, the Cabe Cube was released by or presented by Jose Manuel Garcia Muzo. But you might be thinking, what am I talking about? If you read the museum entry for it, the idea for this variant was conceived by Javier Cabezuelo. Cabezuelo starts with C-A-B-E. That's why it's called the Cabe Cube. And if you look at the picture there, it has the exact stylings of what Calvin's puzzles released as Evgeny Grigoriev's design. Very, very strange. And it's happened very recently as well, where he has released, or Calvin's Puzzle has released the button cubes, which were credited to, credited to Evgeny, but were actually designed and conceived by Tim Selkirk, who you may remember also did the Rainbow Nautilus Cube. Again, I'm totally unaware of why this would happen, why Evgeny is getting the credit for this. Uh, perhaps some, you know, Calvin's Puzzles constantly says, brilliant design. Okay, whatever. But at the end of the day, the Edge Road Cube, which is what we're looking at today, was presented as an amazing new mechanism. In reality, all it was was this. So you had sort of these stop signs. And for this cube, the stop signs would appear there, 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 and there. And it was basically any face that had a stop sign on it could not turn. So you think, how does that work? Well, if the stop signs are here, clearly you can't turn that face. So what happens, we can turn the green face. But if we turn that stop sign up to the green face, suddenly it can't turn. Why? Because it's bandaged like this. And at the end of the day, that is all it was. Um, there was even comments on Evgeny's video saying, if this is just a bandage cube, it's an absolute ripoff. Mm, maybe. I don't know. So I wanted to give you a little bit of the history there to say, even one of the puzzles in that list, I think it was the Belt Road cube. The Belt Road cube had stop signs on all of them. So this is the edge road, the corner road had them there, the belt road had them all the way around, which means the belt road has all eight of these things. That was not an original cube. That was actually released many years before under the name iCube. So to me, kind of fascinating, kind of weird, don't know what's going on precisely, but at the end of the day, here we are trying to solve the edge road bandaged cube. Now, as I said, I did solve it in the past, so it clearly can't be that difficult. What am I going to do? I'm just going to start scrambling, see what happens and see if I can come up with a method for doing it. Um, straight away, what's interesting is, yes, I can scramble it. I can turn that face. But in order to get it scrambled, I'm going to have to take them out and bring them back, I think. That seems to me to be the logical way to do things. Is there any other way? I mean, I can't move this bottom face or half at all. 
So I reckon I'm doing the right thing. Just trying to think if there's any other way that I could possibly deal with this. What can I do? I can, if I move that there, I can't move that face. I can move that face. I can move that face. And I can, can I? No, I can't move that face. Does that free anything up or does it just make things worse? I can still do that. I can't move this bottom one because of this piece here. So for that, I'd have to undo. I'd have to undo. I'd have to undo. What happens if I do them opposites? It probably destroys everything. It makes nothing turnable. That is correct. Okay, what happens if I do that? Still nothing's turnable. I reckon that's as good as we can get. So from here, I suppose I would start and go, well, let's at least get them there. How are we going to get all of these done? Obviously, you can do down, down, up, ups on this. So if I got to the situation where I just had edges to be cycled, I think that would be possible. It's a question of whether those can be flipped and if so, how that would happen. So perhaps let's go and firstly try and solve some middle layer edges here. Let's see how difficult that is. That's fine. The red white, even that can just be turned in no problem. The red yellow. Yep. And this fourth one, I'll just leave. Um, the corners, I'm not sure if I want to do these corners yet, but if I could, I would be finding the correct corner, red, white, blue, and I'd have to get the correct color on the bottom. In that case, well, it'd be blue. So I'd probably turn that around to there, lift the blue up to the top, and I think that would then allow me to just go three down, down, up, ups. Okay, that looks good. Let's try the same thing here. This one's already in position, but I need to get it out to change its orientation. That's out. I need the blue on the bottom. I'll bring it around to, sorry, blue on the top. Bring it around to there. I mean, I think this is a pretty logical method. Obviously, I'll be leaving one at the end. Which one did I leave? That one there. Okay, let's do the orange, yellow. Orange, yellow, blue. Got to have blue on the top, and I'm going to have to use this one to raise that up. Bring it around to there. Okay, so three of them are done. Now we've got this to play with. What have we got? I've got to have a green orange back there, a green white around here, which is currently flipped. But by the look of it, I can just move it up like that. And then this last lot. Mm, so no issues seemingly at all with placing these edges. In terms of placing the corners, I actually think we could still... Yeah, very interesting. So, I mean, what I would love to do is be able to do kind of an up, up, down, down, and then turn the upper face like on a single algorithm Rubik's Cube solve. To do that, I feel like I might have to use this face and this face as my up, up, down, down, and this is the up. But that's going to be slightly problematic because it brings that into play. Let's just ponder what might be the most logical way to do this. I think the first thing would be to get this corner at the back, green, orange, white. So I'm going to initially put this down the bottom. Then I'm going to turn the position around and put it into position. And then undo. Where does that leave me? That is in place and I do have a three cycle of corners. Okay, so my thought process always is use the simplest moves available. So if I can do up, up, down, downs, that's what I want to do. Now, as I said, 
I kind of think, well, look, green, white, red has got to go there. Yellow, green, red's got to go there. That's got to go there. So let's say that I turned it like this. That actually is really nicely set up, I think, so that I can go up. Or do I want to go up? I think I want to go up, up, down, down. That will orient that one as well. Bring this around and reverse. That has placed all of my corners. Now, the obvious question you'll be asking is, what if I had to do this as one of the corners? If that was the case, I think I would swap that out to here. I would just bring it out to here with a three down, down, up, ups, and then repeat that. So now I've got corners to twist. Again, can I do it using these simple moves? I think I can. And that is the problematic corner. So once again, I reckon I'm going to first bring that yellow, blue, red up to here. And I've got to remember that it needs to twist clockwise. So I'm going to bring it up to here. First of all, okay, then I'm going to come back here and twist this thing clockwise. All right, to do that, I'll just involve another corner that also needs to be twisted. I'm pretty sure that was one of them. So to do that, I'm just going up, up, down, down twice to twist it clockwise. Then bring that one in and reverse. And you can see because it's away from the bandage part, this works okay. Now that that's been done, I want to put this back. And you'll notice now the blue's on the top, which is going to go to the bottom. That's precisely what I want it to happen. Now let's come back to here and note that we only have two left to go. And in fact, this is really nicely set up. I can just do a turn there. A clockwise rotation here. Oh, hang on. No, I want it up here. That's where I need it to be. So to get them both up to there, I would probably go do that setup, which I won't worry about remembering. Now, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to go front right front and that has the two corners there front right front now i can go ahead and twist this one turn the other one in and undo undo my setups um, what was the other one i said front right Front, but I think I did a front right prime front but maybe I didn't I think I've totally stuffed up the setups now okay I'm back to that position before I completely mucked up the undoing of the setups so again I'm thinking rightio let's try this again that's got to go anti-clockwise that's got to go clockwise so in order to do that Really, all I need to do is right prime up. That's it. How on earth could I stuff that up? I don't know. I am very, very talented. Anyway, let's go ahead and rotate those two. I mean, seriously, it's two moves away. It couldn't have been that. I must have done some other weird setup move there. I'm not sure because that's very obvious now. So there it is, the belt road. As I suspected, not a not a very difficult puzzle because if I can just solve it like that, I class it as not very difficult. Um, the lesson there for me is don't muck up your setup moves. But still a, a reasonably interesting one in terms of just thinking through how and where you have to do things. I'm not sure whether the corner road will be easier or harder because I just don't remember it. And I certainly don't remember the belt road. I've zero memory of the crossroad because I don't think I ever looked at it. But this, the edge road, well, that's now done. Well, here is the puzzle for the next video. 
This one is the well-known Cube Twist 2 bar 4. So this is definitely not a super difficult puzzle, but it is an interesting one in that you end up doing a different approach to a lot of the other puzzles. So Cube Twist 2 bar 4, the official specification for that, we've got a big clock running across the up face from front to back. And if we turn it over like that, it looks exactly the same. And what that means is we've got a big clock running across the down face from left to right. So when we have it there, you can kind of tip it up and go, oh yeah, it's kind of, it's actually perpendicular. Although if you do that, it looks like it's the same. So just the two big clocks and that's what we'll look at next time, the cube twist two bar four. Well, here's the puzzle for the next video. And this one is called the two bar four version two. It's probably the only puzzle that hasn't officially been presented. And that's because... I came up with it. Don't get too excited. It's pretty unexciting. It is the same as the two bar four. From this point of view, you've got the yellow big clock there, but instead of having a white big clock running here, I've moved it to a red big clock. So instead of the big clocks being on opposite faces, they are now adjacent. That is what it looks like. That's for the next video.